countdown to control. Four, three, two, one. We are, 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 we are. VR talk is all the rage following the announcement of the Oculus Rift pre-orders and pricing. Uh, it is $599, everyone's very, very excitable about it. Some people are angry at the idea, some people cynical about VR, some people huge zealots. And we're going to talk about the differences between those two camps this week. Uh, we're going to talk about the potential merits, the potential pitfalls of VR. It's a whole virtual reality episode. Good. Let's. Let's watch that, shall we? I'll be all right here. Because we're on the internet, the Oculus Rift and associated virtual reality dream have become polarizing and hotly debated affairs. <laughs> you could say there's been a... <laughs> a rift. <laughs> <laughs> The day Oculus announced its pre-order price of $599, my Twitter feed became an amazing thing to watch, as I witnessed the battle lines drawn in real time. On one side, people proclaiming VR is dead, the price was too high, and that Oculus was going to fail. On the other side, VR troopers, as I'm calling them, prematurely proclaiming the Rift a resounding success because it sold out its initial batch in 15 minutes, and using the launch price of systems from decades ago to justify the price now, and claim the Rift doesn't really cost that much when you compare it to a completely different generation. The smug, passive aggression on the internet that day was glorious, enough to make me jealous, not least for the fact that the cynics and zealots each are mostly talking complete and utter bollocks. Now personally, I've been taking a bit of a wait and see approach for VR, because the newness of the current technology, the price, and the shovelware I've seen like Paradise Island make me somewhat leery. All that said, I have tried the Rift before, and I did buy the rather affordable Gear VR, which I've enjoyed quite a lot. I will happily say I'm cynical about virtual reality as a concept, but that doesn't mean I dislike it, or even think it'll fail. I'd just rather see some canaries go down the mine first before I do. While some claim VR is dead in the water, and others claim it's the future of video games, I find myself struggling to identify with either of those extreme opinions. I can't see it dying out with a whimper right now, nor do I envision it, at least in its current form, as the future of gaming. While not as bad as when idiots were slurping the genitals of 3D TV like dumb morons, the VR troopers who think we'll all be living like that sex scene in Demolition Man ignore just how prohibitive virtual reality is. Obviously the cost factor is the most prominent hurdle, with Rift costing as much as the PS3 did back in the day, on top of a high-end gaming PC that'll be needed to work it. If you're a privileged tech blogger, well off enough to have $600 burning a hole in your pocket, or if you're Ben Kachera, then sure, the price isn't that big a deal. But it's a fucking lot, okay? And I can't see the mass market wanting to drop that much cash on what is, essentially right now, a gamble. Oh, but the pre-orders sold out in 15 minutes, VR Troopers declared. Claire. Yeah, so? Scarcity in tech products is nothing new, and not a guarantee that the thing will have mainstream potential. I had no doubts the launch run would sell out. It's guaranteed that there are going to be more than enough tech-hungry gamers with 600 going spare to have it sell out. That doesn't mean it'll fly off a Best Buy shelf, or it'll be something a parent will get their kid for Christmas. Aimed at its current market, yeah it's sold out, but that doesn't mean it's the future. Price is far from the only factor though. The same prohibitive issues faced by 3D TV can be found in VR as well. People with eye issues, those prone to strain and migraines, motion sickness sufferers. These are all problems standing between customers and VR. Hell, the Gear VR's own disclaimers say that those under the age of 13 shouldn't even use it, and warn against prolonged use for any age. For 599 bones, the Rift is probably something you can't use for your extended gaming binges. And all this is to say nothing of the need for calibration, the tech requirements, the space requirements, all the things that make the Rift less simple to use, and therefore less enticing to a mainstream buyer who wants something to just pick up and play. Now none of this is to say that VR isn't fucking cool. I really do like the experiences I've had with it, and though it makes me queasy if I use it too long, I can't deny I haven't had a fun and sometimes inspiring time with it. And I also think those who cynically declare that the Rift and VR are dead are putting the cart way before the horse with a tone that suggests they somehow want it to fail for some reason. The Rift has a lot of barriers to entry, but that doesn't mean it can't find success as a niche product. I mean, not everybody's going out to buy a Fabergé egg, but that don't mean the people selling them 
them haven't made mad cheddar over the years. Being a niche success is still succeeding, and with Rift currently deliberately targeting the tech-savvy VR troopers and the Ben Kacheras of the world, it could have a great targeted launch that generates the kind of buzz needed to pave the way for a future, more affordable, more mainstream-friendly VR product. For those like me, waiting for the canaries, the positive buzz of a less mainstream crowd could serve as a tipping point, especially since it seems Oculus hasn't skimped on the quality to drive the price down, like a certain company did with a certain motion tracking device that certainly fucking failed. And while those comparing the Rift to the NES to justify its launch price are being ridiculous, that doesn't take away from the precedent of expensive launches aimed squarely at early adopters. While Palmer Lucky claims the current price is absurdly low, even though it absolutely isn't to those with financial responsibilities, 600 isn't really that shocking. New tech will always be sold at a premium as it reels in early adopters and Ben Kachera, and if tech companies were able to successfully sell us goddamn fucking watches for hundreds of bucks, the Rift will probably do okay. With the Vive and PlayStation VR still on the horizon, it's too early to call anything right now, no matter how smarmy you are while you're calling it. Those gleefully reveling in VR's death are not only doing so prematurely, they're ignoring its potential to be a successful niche product, ignoring the fact that even if it's not the future of games, that doesn't mean it can't be part of the future of games. Ignoring the fact that a black and white either or scenario isn't the only outcome. And they really should give it a chance, because, you know, items like the Rift really are genuinely quite special when you try them. Meanwhile, VR troopers claiming the price isn't that much and arrogantly dismissing those who find 600 bucks too rich for their blood? Don't be a prick. And maybe appreciate that not everybody, in fact, statistically hardly anybody, is as lucky as you to have that much to drop on a whim. Look, I've spent obscene amounts of money on bullshitty a bullshit in my time, I ain't gonna judge you for that. But when you're telling other people that 600 bucks on top of a high-end PC isn't really that much of an investment, you're coming off as an elitist quat who doesn't understand the value of money. And all that said, if Oculus wants to hook a boy up, y'all got my email ready, didn't you? Yeah? Yeah, smash it. This, this is what a professional of my caliber puts up with. This, this kind of shit. I say that, I mean, I could just afford a new one, which I have done. I have bought a new lector and it's on its way. <laughs> it's down to FedEx or UPS or whoever is gonna send it to me. But a new podium's coming, how exciting. Uh, it's uh, going to be uh, black and boxy, uh, so it'll fit in around here because uh, that'll be black and boxy and I'm in black and I'm round. So that's a kind of thematic... I don't know what I'm fucking talking about, but anyway. New lectern's coming, so this piece of junk's gonna go away. It served me well! This has been with the show since... fuck, episode two? Episode three? On The Escapist, no less? So it's been years and years and years uh, that this thing has been in my office, taking up space, and being a wobbly bastard. So we'll see how the new one shakes down. You know, unless I put it together and it turns out it's shit or it's like really short and my knob hangs over the top of it. Um, which will be a shame because I do most of these without pants on. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll look forward to that and we'll thank God for me in the meantime. So... Last week, I said that Namco Bandai was responsible for the gritty tragedy that was Bomberman Act Zero. Turns out that wasn't entirely true. I was corrected instantly by viewers. Um, actually, although Namco Bandai obviously owned the rights to Bomberman and all that shit, they actually farmed that project out to Konami! Oh yes, how exciting! So, rather than issue a full retraction and apology, I thought I'd just wail on Konami some more. They're shit, aren't they? They can't even do Bomberman right, bunch of shit wankers. So anyway, that was my correction slash another little dig at Konami as part of Fuck Konami News. All the news that's fit to make you say fuck Konami. Thank God for me. See you later.